for the normal stuff. Right? For all around them, it was yeah. prior. I'm not sure. I yeah, thought it was to get a little bit more. I believe it's up to 275 right now. We've only spending like 250 on the Welcome to the May 8th, 2023 meeting of the Snowden City Commission. We'll have an invocation offered by Commissioner Meiser, followed by the pledge. Father, we ask that you help us work together with understanding and compassion in our hearts. Let us not be rude or arrogant towards one another. We all have patience, courage, determination to meet and overcome the inevitable difficulties and problems and failures in our community. In your name we pray. Amen. 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 I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands. One, one nation, nation under God, God indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <coughs> as far as you call the roll. Yes, Mr. President. Mr. Poole. Here. Mr. Murray. Here. Mr. Brady. Here. Mr. Bajali. Here. Mr. Waddington. Here. Mr. Harris. Mr. Meinzer. Here. I have a motion to excuse Commissioner Harris. So moved. Second. Got a motion and a second discussion. Oh. Hearing no objection. <coughs> motion is approved. Hearing no objection. That motion is approved. <laughs> Commissioner, do you have before you the minutes of our meeting of April the 24th, 2023? What's your pleasure? Mr. Chairman, I move that we accept the minutes of the April 24th meeting and dispense the formal reading. Second. Got a motion and a second discussion. Without objection, that motion will be approved. Hearing no objection, that motion is approved. Any residents with comments regarding the nice agenda, please step to the podium, share with us your thoughts, name and address, and your agenda comments. <coughs> this is getting a lot easier, I can tell you that. We have swearing in of a new firefighter this evening. Uh, Mr. Orzak, you gonna do the duties? Yes, sir. Uh, yeah, Jared Berkey, he's originally from the Kent area where his family owns a landscaping company. Uh, he most recently worked for the Tiffin Fire Department for a short time before coming to Sandusky. Um, he does have some ties to the Sandusky area. His girlfriend, who unfortunately had to work tonight, um, is from the Perkins area. Um, he attended Columbus State University where he earned his 240-hour firefighter and his paramedic, his EMT certification. He's currently enrolled at Ehovian Paramedic School. Jared enjoys hunting in his spare time and is assigned a number three shift under the direction of Captain Jim Green. Congratulations, Jared, and welcome to Sandusky. Congratulations, that probably is the most successful pinning that we've had since I've been <laughs> You're welcome back anytime. He's a new guy too, the other one. Yeah. 
Next on our agenda is a presentation of the South Side Plan to be conducted by our Chief Planner, Aaron Blair. Thank you, Commission President Brady. I'm very pleased to bring this presentation to City Commission tonight. When I first joined the city, uh, Mr. Wobster, our city manager at the time, told me the Southside Plan was one of the most important things for me to focus on right away, which became an exercise in understanding how long it takes to get to refine an RFQ process and select a consultant and come up with a scope and engage the community, uh, which we've done. I think we've done it well and really enjoyed getting to know so many residents and stakeholders in the South Side through this process and even more excited to jump in and begin implementing this plan. Today, our uh, project manager from Smith Group, Kendra Heisen, is on the line to walk us through just a really high-level overview of the contents of the Southside Plan. And I would start by saying this is like a 160-page plan, so there's a lot more to see than what you will see tonight. We have produced an executive summary, which is a, a, a much an abbreviated version just to help everybody really understand what's in it, and those will be available. And uh, without further ado, I will pass it over to Kendra. And Kendra, I'll make sure everybody can see you and our slides here. Let me hit that. Awesome. Um, well, thank you, Commission leadership. Thank you, city staff. And thank you, Aaron, for having me this evening, um, as well as selecting us, Smith Group, as your consultant team. I'm Kendra Heisen, trained landscape architect and urban planner um, based in Washington, D.C. Um, this planning process was uh, um, a long process but it was very fulfilling. It was really exciting to work with the Southside community and see all the passion and um, vigor around the Southside plan. And so uh, the Southside plan, if we go on to the next slide, just to give you, um, or if you're still working on the tech, Aaron, let me know. Got you. Okay. Um, so over the course of the, uh, 2022 and 2023, the Southside community collaborated to create one unified vision for the future of the Southside neighborhood. Um, that vision is uh, stated here in the community vision statement, which states that the Southside is a welcoming, safe, and family-focused neighborhood with a deep sense of community pride, where new and long-standing residents from a diversity of economic, social, and ethnic backgrounds have access to key resources like small and local businesses, well-paying jobs, affordable housing, open spaces, and social services that enhance all communities' members' living experience. Um, to conduct this planning process, we went through a significant community engagement undertaking um, that included handing out lots of flyers, we had a, community, um, a steering committee of local leaders and community members from the South Side. We held four community stakeholder meetings where we did visioning. We had tons of community touch points. We conducted online surveys. We had a visioning workshop. We had a youth engagement workshop. And we also had um, several meetings with city staff. We did social media posts and outreach. So the extent of the community engagement was broad, and we tried to make sure that we reached as many people as possible within the Southside community to get involved, because this plan is for the Southside community by the Southside community. Um, you can see here where we did where we highlighted things that the community wanted to protect, enhance, and transform. And those things led to our six pillars um, of the Southside plan. Uh, the pillars not only came out of the community engagement, but were things that the city had outlined in previous planning initiatives that were key focus areas for the South Side as well as broader um, Sandusky. And those pillars are housing and neighborhoods, connectivity and infrastructure, parks and open space, access and services, economic prosperity, and branding and beautification. And within each of those six pillars, we highlighted priority goals. Um, the plan obviously has, each, each of these um, pillars has possibly more than um, two goals that are within that those chapters, but these are the priorities. So within housing and neighborhoods, we wanted to expand housing assistance for current residents and maintain overall housing affordability. And we also wanted to enhance housing conditions and diversify housing types. Um, within connectivity infrastructure, this was a big one, which we wanted to make sure the community got upgrades to their infrastructure, including water and stormwater systems, as well as improve neighborhood connectivity and enhance pedestrian connectivity. 
um, for parks and open space. We wanted to ensure that we transform Churchwell Park into a neighborhood serving park and add some additional amenities to that space to enhance Southside's sort of recreational facilities and access within those communities. Uh, additionally, access and services, we wanted to prioritize building trust and improve community relationships because we can't get anything done by ourselves. We have to get it done together. And so um, with that, we wanted to also increase residents' access to educational resources in order for them to participate broadly in the process. Um, economic prosperity, we wanted to make sure to incentivize development opportunities, not just for outside developers, but for folks within the South Side by locating strategically, um, strategically locating mixed use development, and then working with neighboring jurisdictions like Perkins Township and things like that to increase local job opportunities and attract these new businesses to the South Side and Sandusky as a whole. And then lastly, branding and beautification. Um, top priorities there were improving streetscape to reinforce the sense of place and enhance real and perceived safety, um, as well as we wanted to tell the Southside story. We realized that there are loads of multi-generational families and people who call Southside home or who have who are from the South Side who still um, live in Sandusky till this day. And we wanted to make sure to honor that history that's so rich within the South Side. And resulting from those six pillars, we had sort of um, some top recommendations, which were to sort of improve, not even sort of, but to improve and activate Churchill Park as well as Strobel Field for enhancements. Um, we wanted to make some investments in the middle school adaptation and MacArthur Park as uh, additionally adding some um, connectivity and pedestrian safety improvements to make sure people can walk and potentially bike to various locations throughout the South Side, uh, activate some of the retail areas, and also improve um, public art and develop the American Crayon site and improve the underpass um, opportunities to connect people to downtown. Um, the plan itself, uh, I think we I'd like to say we did a really good, great job at making the plan as accessible as possible. So it's not just a, a, a large document that's designed to sit on the shelf, but we wanted to make sure that people could read it, could understand it, and could pull out the necessary um, items that were relevant to them. And so we did that by using the six pillars as sort of our chapter guide for each of the chapters of the plan. Each of those chapters has its own vision statement related to that particular pillar. We highlight key terms so that people understand everything that we're saying in the plan. And we use data um, as well as graphics to reinforce the goals and strategies that we're looking to complete in each of these chapters. Um, some of the great news is thanks to a lot of the hard work from the community as well as Aaron and city folks, we have some of these things um, being implemented today and are in action right now. Uh, there was an RFQ for Churchwell Park um, recreation improvements. Not sure where you all landed on that just yet, Aaron, if you guys selected anything, but um, we also wanted to, uh, there's some MacArthur Park roadway and utility improvements underway along with that Churchwell Park recreation improvement. Um, Safe routes to school plans, um, the 2023 housing development and beautification grant, and then um, Sandusky Rec Center, which is also underway. I understand you all selected a um, consultant to complete that. And additionally, the housing study. Um, I, Aaron, I don't know if you want to chime in on any of these things or. Sure, um, I'll mention a few things. So the first one, that Churchill Park Re Recreation with M MacArthur Park, we're working, planning in uh, Public Works, are working to select a consultant for that. So we'll be able to start that project here soon. And then Safe Routes to School, that is a process that's being currently kind of co-developed with the Public Health Department and the city schools. And that update of that plan will uh, increase eligibility of funding for some of walking improvements, Safe Routes the school improvement, so hopefully there'll be a funding mechanism there. And that's also shows a continued partnership and interest with the health department to help improve uh, the quality of life in the city of Sandusky. Uh, the health department also is supporting the Churchwell Park <laughs> improvements with a grant from the Ohio Health Improvement Zones. As you know, we, we brought that to you recently. Um, the development, the housing program, um, what we wanted to highlight there is that we had an informational meeting in the South Side, and it was one of those first steps to bring more education and more conversations to residents just to help them understand what is the process, how to apply to that process, and we'll be able to start tracking uh, our success rates and, and being able to reach folks by seeing if they're bringing us applications. Um, 
the Sandusky Recreation Center, to anyone that, that's listening, there is a citywide survey out for that right now. You can find that QR code in the hob lobby at City Hall on our website. You'll see little cards going out. So we really want to hear from you on what kinds of needs you are looking for and what programs you're looking for uh, in a new city uh, recreation slash community center. So please answer those surveys. And then the housing study is was conducted by Firelands Forward. There's going to be some presentations you'll see announced going along for those. And we really think we're going to be able to learn a lot from this housing study and um, probably bring some of that to you in a presentation, city commissioners. Uh, I think that there's going to be some really important policy implications from that housing study that we're going to want to take a look at that hopefully will help us uh, bring some development and understanding of housing typology and different needs that we'll specifically be able to apply to the south side and also citywide. Thank you for that, Erin. And I'd just like to thank, um, thank again our steering committee who helped to guide this process and all the community members and residents who participated in this process. I know it's long and there's a lot happening and can be confusing and, and sometimes boring, but I think ultimately we landed on a really great um, neighborhood plan that it should and I believe does reflect the community's wants and needs. But I'm so grateful to the community for embracing Smith Group as well as um, the city and bringing us on to do this really wonderful project. So thank you all for your time and um, I'll leave you all to the rest of your meeting if there are no questions. Thanks, Kendra. I really appreciate your leadership. And I would ask um, through the president if uh, there's a question. Mr. Chairman, not a question, but I've sat through this with you several of these meetings and I know it's pretty close to a year ago that we started this process and I got an inch thick stuff here and you know I'm a note taker and do a lot of reading. This is a uh, critical development, probably one of the most important things that we can do. We got six designated neighborhood areas, but the south side is critical and it takes the vision, I don't want to call it a vision, but everything's downtown and now we're doing something out in the neighborhood. It's been long, long time ago this should have happened. We got, now we've got a, a light cast out here. Uh, I hope it goes real fast. I know we got some money set aside. Uh, Saturday, we had a group of seven of us did a cleanup out there at that Churchill Park and that. And we got a lot of city property out there. Uh, you know, we could uh, get the park on, maybe some lighting. It's not going to happen overnight, but I'm just glad that we got seed money and we got folks that are really going to get behind this. I discussed this today with uh, Mr. Murray a little bit about so I think this is one of the most critical things that's happened in the last four or five years. If we can get this, I shouldn't say if, when we get this thing going and get a little steam behind us. So I'm really excited about it. Thank you. Mr. Chairman. Mr. Murray. Just to follow up on some of Mr. Waddington's comments, we, we did talk earlier today and you know, I, I, I used the analogy, which might date me just a little bit, but I, I want to explain. So back when we were putting together the bicentennial plan, I and a lot of the commissioners told Mr. Wopser and staff that this south side plan was one of the most important things that was going to come out of the bicentennial plan. It's taken a while for us to get here, number one, because it's complex, number two, it was a long time to process or put this process to get together, but we had to go through a property acquisition phase. Um, and uh, I think we're now in a position to act on those and potentially bring some more affordable housing to the south side and all of Sandusky. The, the more mass we can bring to that, the more we have the ability to attract outside investors. Um, but this is, is, and any of you remember the AAA triptychs? Um, uh, this is where I'm dating myself, but you'd, you'd take a cross country trip and then you'd have a page for about how you, <coughs> much you could travel that day. And then you would open it up and it would say, this is where you might stay or this is where you might go to eat. And you're not going to do all those things, on, at least on that trip, for sure. And maybe you're never going to do all those things. But this is a permanent record for us. I'm going to depart from the analogy here because we're an institution. The city is an institution. The people at this table change. The people at that table change. The people upstairs change. Um, but the residents, by and large, stay here. And this is a plan that can ensure that we have uh, a mile marker to look back to and say, this was approved by the city commission, I hope, adopted. Uh, it's been approved by the staff. Uh, it's gone through a long process of being tested by the community and stakeholders. And now it's time to implement this. So it gives it some 
it gives it some legitimacy going forward. And um, seven years from now, eight years from now, when there's been a big change in, in this table and that table, we'll still have this document because I think it's going to take a while to execute some of these things. And we've talked about the fact that a lot of the underground work needs to be done first. We're not going to improve parks only to tear them up to put in water and sewer because that runs right through some of these parks. We're not going to tear up, um, we're not going to fix roads and sidewalks and then tear them all up to put in new water and sewer. There's a sequence to this that has to be done. That's uh, in some areas, it's been neglected a long time. In some areas, that was a result of some poor planning uh, in, in past years. In some areas, it was simply a, a result of the fact that uh, for many, many years, the state of Ohio disinvested in cities like ours. Um, there's been some change to that, frankly, locally, uh, because we have the resources to tackle some of these things now. General Assembly isn't doing cities like ours any good uh, still, but um, you know we're taking upon ourselves to make these changes. So I'm excited that we have this put in place. I do think it will be um, a guide, a guide for work for years to come. Additional comments or questions, Commissioner? Mr. Chairman, Commissioner Poole, is uh, Strobel Field ours? What are we? What enhancements do you have a plan for Strobel Field? I was on the. Strobel Field is a uh, city school's property, and it's largely underutilized. There uh, is a barrier with a fence that goes across, so it just doesn't look super welcoming. So the opportunities there would be perhaps finding some funding to add some green infrastructure, similar to the project that was completed in the parking lot here at Jackson Street a couple blocks away, or to have community events there to be able to use it a little bit more often so folks feel like they have access. It's a really big, broad, flexible space because it, you know, parks a lot of cars for football games, but is, are there other ways that we can do temporary kind of pop-up uses, beautification projects to really enliven that space and just help it feel more welcoming? One, one barrier to walkability is not feeling a perception of safety when you're walking. And so if you're, if you're finding cracked sidewalks or you know lots of tall fencing or um, poorly maintained properties, all of those are barriers to walkability. All right, Mr. Chairman, uh, what do we have? Uh plan short term to uh, get started on this. The uh, overall plan is things that we know need to be done and it's put together very well so that we can understand it. But what's important for these folks is uh, what you're going to do uh, when. And I realize the, so what's, what, what do you got? Mm -hmm. so Thank you for the question too. Through the commission chair to Commissioner Poole, one thing I can point to is uh, we heard, we did a youth workshop, which is a really great piece of this program. And um, they were like, well, what about mental health support? We need, we need to be able to talk to folks and, and how does that work? And Tondra with our uh, youth supervisor of programs created a mental health uh, events that's recurring with the health department. So that's something that was implemented right away. Uh, going out and um, Ms. Gilson and um, our housing specialists went out and talked with folks to help them understand the housing beautification development grant approval process. So we've already done those things. Uh, one of the biggest ones I mentioned already is that Churchwell Park and MacArthur Park infrastructure plus park improvements. As Commissioner Murray mentioned, we don't want to work on the water sewer or we don't want to put in a new park and then have to dig it up. So we're going to co-manage the process with, it's going to be an engineering process and a park redesign process. We have $1.7 million dedicated to pursue that right away. And we're already in, in uh, interviewing to choose consultants to bring a team to you that we think will be great at, at doing completing that work. So we'll be ramping that up very soon. All right, thank you. And uh, Mr. Chairman, just a comment in simple terms from, I, I read all the pages of what, what what's in this document. And it seems that for, for giving us direction of what citizens are looking for, uh, it mostly was about uh, fix the roads, light the, light the, light the community up, provide lighting, uh, make it safe, water and sewer, and all of these other nice enhancements are very fine, but when they're taking money away from the things that actually have an impact on folks' lives today, I just suggest that, that that's going to be the sticking point as we go forward. It, it's This all sounds very nice, but the things that the folks ask for uh, I think are the things that we need to look, look to first because they they are what, those are the things that improve their lives. Um, MacArthur Park with a, you know, 
hundred, $200,000 worth of shrubbery and various decorations when the folks would just like some nice equipment for their kids to play on. Um, <coughs> likewise, we have, I would, that would ask this question. Uh, uh, Mr. Murray mentioned all the properties that we have uh, acquired as part of this nice, long, slow process, deliberate process. What's the plan to do with them? So there's the plan itself is really focusing on a policy direction. So thinking about different types of housing, so smaller footprint housing, smaller types of units, connected, multifamily. It also helps us understand some zoning barriers that we have. For example, the setbacks of our multifamily zoning are not conducive to being able to get new multifamily residential development. They're outdated. So that's some of the things you're gonna see from the planning division bringing through from the policy perspective is looking at some of those zoning things <coughs> that can enable development and then um, understanding the density that's gonna be appropriate with the analysis of the water and sewer. We can't build it too dense because we don't have this water capacity to do so. So we definitely wanna see new housing come into that neighborhood and there's uh, a series of, of questions to untangle that are, this document really helps us with the steps of how to start that. Mr. John. I want to do a uh, quick follow. On some of my notes, I was looking through like storm sewers and all that, but we were looking at community development block grants, and I hit 400,000. I know the numbers probably changed since then for upgrades for <coughs> folks outside of MacArthur Park, like windows, doors, siding. I had mentioned uh, in the past, maybe two, three minutes ago, about paint. You know, some people just need a little extra hand or, you know, help uh, maybe. Uh, from us through uh, either grants or getting out, you know, knowledge. And we did, most of the commissioners did the walkthrough. I think we were out there a couple times, right, Steve? We went through Saturday, walked through the neighborhoods out there. Some of them need a little help. And, uh, you know, that could be something short term next year or two that we could look at. Was my 400,000 murders in my memory bad? Of the CDBG program? I can't answer that question right now, but I can okay. follow up with you. Okay. Mr. Chairman, if, if I can give Ms. Blair some advice, never bet against Mr. Waddington's memory. <laughs> <laughs> Almost always going to be right. But, but to follow up on that point, uh, you know, I, I, I think we should take a page from what I've suggested to staff, giving some consideration to rearranging how we apply some of these improvement uh, dollars. And um, Perkins had a program, for example, that set aside for one particularly um, disadvantaged neighborhood um, an opportunity to apply for a certain amount of the home improvement grants first. And then that goes a little bit longer. If that's not exhausted, it goes, it spills back over into the larger pool. I think that's one of the things we could, we could consider. I think the painting program where we, we pay for the paint and we help uh, get that to volunteers, I think that made sense. I don't know, somewhere along the way somebody got spooked about a liability problem, which was nonsense. Um, there's no liability problem. You give somebody paint, they're volunteers, they sign appropriate waivers, and away you go. Yeah. So I know that's not an issue, and I, I do think that would be a good program to bring back. Additional comments, questions? Mr. Chairman. Mr. I, it, it's, thank you, Ms. Blair. It was a very comprehensive uh, plan, and uh, I, I go with this. the six pillars. It's funny how we all take something different from reading them all. It, it, it is very comprehensive, and, and uh, you know, I heard... Uh, lighting and play parks and housing but that and i take from it the same thing i hear from every neighborhood is uh you know housing uh the blight the code enforcement the nuisance the uh crime the the, the presence of police officers uh the money for down payment on housing the money allocated for improvements on housing that that runs throughout the city no matter which neighborhood i'm in so i when I read this report, I, it, right away I jump to that's the priority. So we all take what we read and think differently, but that's that's my two cents. Something in there for everyone. Yeah. Two two things that I found impressive about the plan was that it's, it's very comprehensive. We've gathered a ton of information. I don't think, I'm pretty sure none of us read all 160 pages. Uh, in the length of time that we... That I we take... Did. Mr. Waddington and I take exception. I read it twice. Perhaps you two have trouble sleeping. Mr. Bull too. Get more thought. I got hard copies for you. And the second thing that, that I'm pleased to, to see is it's obvious that you've had community engagement. The reality is 
This plan should not be what the six of us sitting here tonight want. It should be what the people that live out there want. And yeah, there's some common things that belong in every neighborhood, but the fact that you're allowing the <coughs> residents to have a voice in this, a real voice, and not just paying lip service to, to their voice, uh, I think that's important. I think that will go a long way to their success. And, and I, I do get it. This is uh, it's one of those kind of plans that's going to take a long time, and that's not a cop-out. Uh, maybe we're late at coming to the table and getting this done, but this is a long journey, and, and you've started off on the first few steps, and I think the first few steps have been very good by both our staff and certainly by the Smith Group, who's landed on a very good, uh, very good consultant to help us pull this together. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks to our friends of the Smith Group too. Yeah. Thank, you. Thank you. Thank you. We have a. Uh, don't go anywhere, Miss Blair. We have a public uh, hearing on a zoning map amendment for East Washington Street. This hearing will be conducted by Ms. Blair, and as it is a public hearing, we will entertain questions from both the commission and from the public at the conclusion of the presentation. Thank you, Commission President Brady. Switch my communications here. I want to point out that the item for consideration on your, com on your uh, communication has an incorrect parcel number, but the subject of the communication has the correct parcel number. So this is a public hearing to, um, for a zoning map amendment for 603, 605, 611, 617, and 619 East Washington Street. Parcels 56-0002-0000-56-0073400-0000-56-0033.0000-56-0036.0000-56.0030 and 56.0030. Uh, this application was submitted by Danielle Murray to amend the zoning map to expand the transient rental overlay district to include the above mentioned addresses. This was approved by Planning Commission November 22nd of 22. It normally would have been, uh, you, you normally would have seen it sooner than this during a normal process, but we had some interruption in our transient rental for a number of reasons, and that's why you're hearing this public hearing today. Um, so just to cover where this is on East Washington Street, on the left part, um, you'll see the horizontal black lines on top of the zoning map is the current transient rental overlay district. So this is contiguous to that district, uh, moving west on Washington Street uh, to the corner of Perry. On the right, you'll see the aerial map of the parcels that are in this application. And it is, the underlying zoning is, zoning is residential to family, and that underlying zoning would not change. It would just expand the transient rental overlay uh, to uh, permit the use of uh, transient occupancy in these parcels. Uh, to our understanding, Ms. Murray is the only owner of these parcels that intends to use her house for transient rental, uh, but planning would not bring this forward without a contiguous expansion of the, the without the application being contiguous to the existing district. Comments, uh, comments from the public regarding this public here. <coughs> Speak directly into the microphone. Danielle Murray, 603 East Washington, Sandusky, Ohio. Hello to the city commissioners, Mr. Brady, Mr. Murray, Mr. Poole, Mr. Mike Meinzer, Mr. Pogelli, and Mr. Waddington. And hello to everyone watching this live on YouTube. <laughs> As you know, on November 22nd, the Planning Commission voted yes on my proposal to grant permission to make 603 East Washington into a transient rental property. From what I've been told, the council people generally do what the Planning Commission suggests, and I only need two of your votes for this proposal to pass. Because I only need to convince two of the council people, I want to address the only person that voted no on my proposal last time. <laughs> Mr. Jolly, you're the only no vote, so I'd like to address you personally. In my opinion, you voted no quite quickly on my project. On the contrary, you voted yes quite quickly for the very large undertaking of the Battery Park project, a project that would include a large hotel and an undetermined plan for what would be done with the native trees in Battery Park. 
After the meeting, you were kind enough to elaborate on why you voted no. You wanted to be consistent on your stance of transient rental. In my opinion, the only thing you should be consistent on is the progress of Sandusky. Each project needs to be looked at individually and the question needs to be asked, will this benefit the city of Sandusky? This is a project that will improve Sandusky and should be voted yes on. One of the reasons is that we need to put more women like myself into leadership decision making and entrepreneurship roles in Sandusky by voting yes on their project and giving them a chance to succeed at those projects. Mr. Bajali, as we were leaving City Hall on November 22nd, you made another comment regarding my project. I recognize that the comment was an offhanded comment. However, I would like to address it regardless. You said you are, quote, not against people making money in reference to my project. I would like to clarify. I am doing the Lake House for many reasons, least of which has to do with making money. Do I hope to make money off of this? Yes, of course. But the main reason I'm pursuing the Lake House is because I believe it will improve the city of Sandusky. Besides entrepreneurial pursuits, the other industry I'm a part of is the entertainment and TV industry. There is a saying in the entertainment and TV industry which also relates to myself and this project. The saying is, we don't make movies to make money. We make movies to make more movies. After this project, I'm hoping to commission a public art piece of a mermaid on the area of my yard that is city-owned property. The other project I plan on pursuing is to eliminate the unnecessary use of plastic bags at CVS, Kroger, and Myers. It makes me quite irked when Kroger gives you two plastic bags for an onion. I think there is an easy and inexpensive way to eliminate the unnecessary use of plastic bags using word of mouth in sure, grass. Sure, I ask that this be uh, focused on the issue before the commission. We're not yes. here to talk about plastic bags. Ms. Murray, I, I'm giving you a lot of latitude here in, in uh, speaking to us, but th there is a time constraint to it, and you went by that a couple of minutes ago. Can you just wrap this up for us? Oh, yes. I would like to humbly <coughs> ask that uh, the council people, including Mr. Pajali, vote yes on behalf of moving forward and making 603 East Washington into a short-term rental unit. Thank you, Ms. Murray. Thank you. Additional comments from the audience? Mr. Chairman. Commissioner Mike. I, I, uh, from the get-go, I was going to vote yes. Um, I do have a vacation rental, or a couple, and uh, it is contiguous, and I think it's on a nice street, and it's close to downtown. There's a few things I would have voted yes if I was on the planning commission. However, I know we gotta, we got to control it, and uh, issue two or something is coming up with a moratorium. But however, uh, Ms. Murray uh, made this presentation months ago, like I think in November, to us and to planning and jumped through all the hoops that I'm sure that planning department asked her to and came up with all the signatures on the street. And uh, I had a couple conversations with Mr. Prajali and I actually thought I had him convinced in voting yes tonight, so I don't know where it's gonna be now. <laughs> yeah. I hope we didn't lose him on that, but yeah, he was all right a couple days ago. <laughs> yeah. So uh, that's the reason I'll be voting yes. Additional comments, additional comments from the public or from the commission? Mr. Chairman. Commissioner Pajella. Um, Ms. Murray, do you, do you live there or do you live in California? I, I live part-time there. I live in California. Okay, Washington. you live part Okay, and I would suggest that you go back and check the minutes. I, I voted no on that project down at uh, Battery Park, so oh, I just I just wanted to correct yeah, the did. record oh. there. Um, was it voted on? It looks like a beautiful project. I I, I did uh, explain myself after that meeting. I thought I was. I owed that to you to explain why I voted no. So I, I thought I was being uh, kind and or charitable in offering my explanation. Um, I, 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 I guess I have to explain myself. I'm, I'm going to vote no because I want to be consistent. Uh, my problem is that if you use the litmus test where you're contiguous, then that's one more piece, and then you just move all the way down the block to you have a large uh, piece of the city that becomes transient housing. So that's, that's my issue. I, I will say in your defense, you, you uh, did a nice presentation at the time, and you did go and you got all the homeowners to sign off 
Uh, and it was notarized, and, and I thought that was a very nice touch because others would bring us an application, and geez, it could have been all rental, rental uh, occupants that signed that, and they had no stake in the neighborhood. So, so I will say that, uh, but I, I will be voting no this evening. Additional comments or questions for the public hearing? Mr. Chairman, Mr. Could you give Mrs. Ms. Murray an opportunity. Oh, he can speak first. I'm in a rush. Yes, sir. Sorry, sir. Apologize. Right. Ryan Dillinger, 907 Fifth Street. Uh, hello, thank you all for giving us your time today. I do believe that uh, any time that a resident or a homeowner in the city of Sandusky wishes to enhance their property uh, to make it uh, more usable, that we should be considering uh, allowing them to do this within reason. Uh, I hear that Mrs. Murray did acquire signatures and jump through a lot of loopholes to get this commission to hear her out, and I think that uh, it would be a good decision to vote yes. Thank you, sir. Commissioner Poole. Uh, just Ms. Murray indicated that this was good for Sandusky. I just wanted to have her elaborate on it, what, why she thinks it is. Some of us don't. Yes, well, I... you got to come to the microphone. Sorry about that. I will be making the house into, I'm hoping to make it into more of an art piece. And I just think having, as I said, I think having more women into decision-making and entrepreneurship roles, I'm just gonna be improving it to the best of my ability. And um, I, uh, besides this, I have uh, other projects that I would like to do and I think putting women into decision making roles is a good thing. I just think it'll improve. I'll just be making, I'll have, hopefully, I'll have like a really cool mailbox and make the yard very beautiful for the city of Sandusky as a whole. All right, <clears throat> thank you. All of the things you mentioned were, are good for Sandusky. What we're measuring here is it against what. Uh, May not be as good, but yes, thank you so much. I, just want, I wanted you to have an opportunity to say it. Yes, but thank you. Thank you. Additional comments from the public or from the commission? If not, I need to clear this public hearing closed. Commissioner, do you have before you start with communications from staff recommending various pieces of legislation? Can I have a motion to accept these communications? So moved. So moved. Second. And a motion and a second discussion. Without objection, the motion is approved. Hearing no objection, that motion is approved. Commissioners, we have three items on the consent agenda this evening. Any of you wish to move any of those items to the regular agenda? Ms. Myers, will you present the consent agenda? Yes, Mr. President. Item A, accepting fiscal year 2023 CDBG one-year action plan. Item B, accepting grant from ODNR for Marine Patrol. Item C, approval of TIRC recommendations. Commissioners, having heard these resolutions, and ordinances, how do you wish to proceed? Mr. Chairman. Commissioner Mike. I move for the adoption of uh, consent agenda items A, B, and C, and declare that the two ordinances and the one resolution take immediate effect within Section 14 City Charter. Second. Got a motion and a second discussion. Mr. Chairman. Commissioner Murray. Simply point out, Chief confirmed for me today what I thought I recalled was this is the boat, the Marine Patrol boat, is the one that was donated to us by Kelly's Island. <coughs> so we don't have any cost in acquiring the, the, the boat simply just to maintain it. Excellent. Additional discussion? Ms. Myers, do you call the roll on that motion? Yes, Mr. President. Mr. Poole? Yes. Mr. Murray? Yes. Mr. Brady? Yes. Mr. Pajali? Yes. Mr. Wannington? Yes. Mr. Meinzer? Yes. And now on the resolution and ordinances. Mr. Poole? Yes. Mr. Murray? Yes. Mr. Brady? Yes. Mr. Pajali? Yes. Mr. Wannington? Yes. Mr. Meinzer? Yes. Those resolution, that resolution and ordinances are passed. Turn to our regular agenda, Ms. Murray, as you present item number one, please. Yes, Mr. President. It is requested an ordinance be passed authorizing and directing the city manager to enter into an enterprise zone agreement with Firelands Federal Credit Union relating to property located at 329 West Perkins Ave and declaring that this ordinance shall take immediate effect in accordance with Section 14 of the City Charter. Commissioner, having heard this ordinance, what is your pleasure? 
Mr. Chairman, I move for the adoption of this ordinance and declare it to take immediate effect in accordance with Section 14 City Charter. Second. Got a motion and a second discussion. Mr. Myers, you call the roll on that motion. Yes, Mr. President. Mr. Poole. Yes. Mr. Murray. Mr. Mr. Brady. Yes. Mr. Bajali. Yes. Mr. Waddington. Yes. Mr. Meinzer. Yes. And now on the ordinance. Mr. Poole. Yes. Mr. Murray. Abstain. Mr. Brady. I will be abstaining on the uh, ordinance. Mr. Pajali. Yes. Mr. Waddington. Yes. Mr. Meinzer. Yes. That ordinance is passed. Ms. Myers, you can present item number two, please. Yes, Mr. President. It is requested an ordinance be passed amending the official zone map of the city of Sandusky to expand the transient occupancy overlay district to include parcels number 56 56-0002255-0033 56-0033 56-0036 and 5600030, located at 603, 605, 611, 617, and 619 East Washington Street, and declaring that this ordinance shall take immediate effect under suspension of the rules as contained in and accordance with Section 13 of the City Charter. Commissioners, having heard this ordinance, how do you wish to proceed? Mr. Chairman, Mr. White. I move for the adoption of this ordinance under suspension of the rules in full accordance with Section 13 of the City Charter. Second. A motion and a second discussion. Mr. Chairman. Commissioner. Um, the, uh, <clears throat> I'm not sure that this should have come before us because the, uh, the rule that started this, in order to qualify for a transient overlay. It, uh, by definition, is supposed to be uh, rehabilitating a, a deteriorating property or neighborhood. This neighborhood is not deteriorating whatsoever. It's actually, uh, we're selling $60,000 lots within two blocks of, of that of this area. There's, there's plenty of activity going, <coughs> plenty of uh, uh, economic activity going on here, so it, it really shouldn't have come here to begin with. It should have when it was first proposed. Uh, not qualified to, be, to even be considered. The fact that the uh, planning department and the planning commission chose to ignore that uh, doesn't change that reality. Uh, taking five houses out of the, and, and literally the opportunity for, for five houses to come off the market for utilization is by uh, residents or as normal rentals, it's not in our it's not in the interest of the community as a whole to do that. It simply do, isn't. No matter what, uh, I'm sure she'll make a nice nail box. It'll look very nice. There are a lot of th reasons that we could 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 come up with to justify anything. Um, so I don't see any. We should we should vote no. Just simple as that. Also, 15 minutes from now, we're going to have a moratorium on uh, vote on putting the moratorium on uh, overlays. It somehow doesn't make sense that we're going to approve one uh, that pretty much doesn't follow the guidelines that we wrote in our original law. And then suddenly, 10 minutes later, say, well, no more, that's it. So I'm voting no. Uh, I don't think that transient rental is uh, just any old place in town is beneficial. I think we need to and should have plan. We've had what since 2017 when we passed this law originally, something like that. 2019, plenty of time to come up with a a, a legitimate plan worthwhile. And we are stuck with this moratorium because planning and planning commission have not have have done things that are clearly. Uh, Many people find not in our interest, which is why we're having the, having this discussion for a moratorium today. So this this has to wait until the moratorium's over, as far as I'm concerned, so that we can uh, get our get the uh, get a law and a, and a sense of plan for what we want to do uh, long term for the community. This is just a short term uh, decision that that we shouldn't pass tonight. It can wait till the moratorium's over. Call it a day. Additional Thank you. comments, commissioners. 
I will be uh, abstaining from this vote as uh, Ms. Murray is uh, the daughter of uh, my first cousin, uh, the late Michael Murray. Ms. Myers, will you call roll on that motion, please? Yes, Mr. President. Mr. Poole? No. Mr. Murray? Abstain. Mr. Brady? Abstain. Mr. Bajali? No. Mr. Waddington? Yes. Mr. Meinzer? Yes. And now on the ordinance. Mr. Poole? No. Mr. Murray? Abstain. Mr. Brady? Abstain. Mr. Bajali? No. Mr. Waddington? Yes. Mr. Meinzer? Yes. Mr. Hyde, will you explain to us uh, the result of that vote? Um, sure. Uh, through you, Mr. <coughs> President, uh, because of the way our, our planning and zoning code works, it takes um, three fourths or six of seven votes to modify or reject a uh, decision by the Planning Commission. Um, because it was, there were two yes votes and the abstentions would count as no votes, it was, and there's an absence, um, it does pass even though there were only two yes votes. Mm -hmm. And it would take effect in accordance with Section 13 of the, of the City Charter, so after 30 days. Thank you, Mr. Howell. That ordinance that is passed. Mr. Myers, will you present item number three? Yes, Mr. President. It is requested an ordinance be passed approving and adopting the South Side Plan for the City of Sandusky and declaring that this ordinance shall take immediate effect in accordance with Section 14 of the City Charter. Commissioners, having heard this ordinance, <coughs> any wish to proceed? Mr. Chairman, I move for the pass of this ordinance pursuant to Section 14 of our city's charter. Second. Got a motion and a second. Discussion. Mr. Chairman, Mr. since we don't have any uh, alternative to this plan and it seems that the process requires it, we pay someone to tell us what we need to do. Uh, I'm going to vote yes for this, but I, I want to clear that I'm more interested in the things that the community has said that they wanted and talk about the people who live there, not just the uh, appointed stakeholders that, that also had a voice in this. But we focus this on uh, uh, roads and, and things that, uh, sidewalks, and things that are gonna improve the uh, lives of these folks out there as, as opposed to some of the other niceties that parties at Strobel Field and things of such like that. Uh, because we have a limited amount of money, and that's that's the reason why. All those things are nice, but we need to set some priorities. But I will vote yes on this. Additional comments, commissioners? Ms. Myers, you call the roll on that motion. Yes, Mr. President. Mr. Poole? Yes. Mr. Murray? Yes. Mr. Brady? Yes. Mr. Pajali? Yes. Mr. Waddington? Yes. Mr. Meinzer? Yes. And now on the order. Mr. Poole? Yes. Mr. Murray? Yes. Mr. Brady? Yes. Mr. Pajali? Yes. Mr. Waddington? Yes. Mr. Meinzer? Yes. That ordinance is passed. I already present item number four. Yes, Mr. President. It is requested an ordinance be passed authorizing and directing payment to the Ohio Water Development Authority for the Water Pol Pollution Control Loan Fund Program application fee for the Mill Street High Rate Treatment Project and the Ultraviolet Disinfection Refurbishment Project and declaring that this ordinance shall take immediate effect in accordance with Section 14 of the City Charter. Commissioners, having heard this ordinance, what is your plan? Mr. Chairman, I move for the adoption of this ordinance on the suspension of the rules in full accordance with Section 14 of the City Charter. Second. And a motion and a second discussion. It appears we are moving very close to or at the finish line with this uh, with this opportunity uh, to partner with the county on uh, on the uh, funding of this project. Is that correct, Mr. Rose? Yeah, through you, uh, Commission President and the other commissioners, yes, we have had uh, good conversations with the county. Um, they've been in agreement with the uh, fee that has been presented tonight, and so uh, we ask and encourage you to do that approve that and uh, also learn late right before the meeting that um, we've been working on an addendum for the sewer agreement that will uh, come before the commission at the next meeting and uh, the county and the city are both in agreement with uh, terms of those um, all of those terms of that uh, agreement that's been uh, talked about for about a month or so so we're uh, encouraged and uh, grateful to the county uh, for working with us and uh, also for city staff for working closely with us to uh, get it across the finish line. Thank you, Mr. Rizek. We'll look forward to that legislation at our next meeting, hopefully. Additional comments or questions, Commissioner? Ms. Myers, you call roll on that motion. 
Yes, Mr. President. Mr. Poole? Yes. Mr. Murray? Yes. Mr. Brady? Yes. Mr. Bajali? Yes. Mr. Waddington? Yes. Mr. Meinzer? Yes. And now on the order. Mr. Poole? Yes. Mr. Murray? Yes. Mr. Brady? Yes. Mr. Bajali? Yes. Mr. Waddington? Yes. Mr. Meinzer? Yes. That order is passed. Ms. Myers, you can done item number five, and we'll, uh, there are two resolutions and uh, five, we'll do more at a time. Yes, Mr. President. It is requested a resolution be passed approving the submission of an application to the Erie Regional Planning Commission Metropolitan Planning Organization for the financial assistance for the Sandusky Primary School Sidewalk Project and if awarded, authorizing and directing the city manager to enter into an LPA federal loan let project agreement with the Ohio Department of Transportation in declaring that this resolution shall take immediate effect in accordance with Section 14 of the City Charter. Commissioners, having heard this resolution, what is your pleasure? Mr. Chairman, I move for the adoption of this resolution on the suspension of the rules in full accordance with Section 14 of the City Charter. That's 5 1. Second. And a motion and a second discussion. Mr. Chairman, I just wanted to ask Mr. Klein, it, it appeared to me that this was going to be a 50-50 split or a 50% match. Through the president. Uh, is, that, uh, is that standard for these kind of projects or is it, uh, I, I remember it used to be 80-20, I didn't know if they had changed that or not. Yeah, through the president, the uh, most entities will go with the 80-20, but the 50-50 gets you more points and makes your application look more favorable. So we go with that 50-50 on these types of projects, knowing that we have sidewalk funding to back them uh, for that 50%, so we can get uh, 50 cents on the dollar. Are those additional points just on sidewalk projects, or are they doing that on road projects also, if you come in with less, with less of an <coughs> Through the commission president, it, it varies on the project. I don't remember exactly what the breakdown is. I think it may have changed a year or two ago, but it, it does. You get you do get more points based on the amount of funding that you're willing to put in. Oh, interesting. Additional Thank you. comments or questions? Ms. Myers, will you call the roll on that resolution? Yes, Mr. President. Mr. Poole? Yes. Mr. Murray? Yes. Mr. Brady? Yes. Mr. Pajali? Yes. Mr. Waddington? Yes. Mr. Meinzer? Yes. And now on the resolution. Mr. Poole? Yes. Mr. Murray? Yes. Mr. Brady? Yes. <coughs> Mr. Pajali? Yes. Mr. Waddington? Yes. Mr. Meinzer? Yes. That resolution is passed, Ms. Myers. You present item 5-2. Yes, Mr. President. It is requested a resolution be passed approving the submission of an application to the Erie Regional Planning Commission Metropolitan Planning Organization for the financial assistance for the Forest Drive sidewalk project and if awarded, authorizing and directing the city manager to enter into an LPA federal loan let project agreement <laughs> with the Ohio Department of Transportation in declaring that this resolution shall take immediate effect in accordance with section 14 of the city charter. Commissioners, having heard this resolution, what is your pleasure? Mr. Chairman, Commissioner. move for the adoption of this resolution pursuant to Section 14 of the City's Charter. Second. second. A motion and a second. Mm -hmm. Discussion. Ms. Myers, do you call the roll on that motion? Yes, Mr. President. Mm -hmm. Mr. Poole? Yes. Mr. Murray? Yes. Mr. Brady? <coughs> Mr. Bajali? Yes. Mr. Waddington? Yes. Mr. Meinzer? Yes. And now on the resolution. Mr. Poole? Yes. Mr. Murray? Yes. Mr. Brady? Yes. Mr. Pajali? Yes. Mr. Waddington? Yes. Mr. Meinzer? Yes. That resolution is passed. Ms. Myers, you present the last item, item number six. Yes, Mr. President. It's requested a resolution be passed imposing a temporary moratorium on the creation, establishment, or expansion of transient occupant occupancy overlay districts and amendments to the zoning code for a change in the use to transient occupancy within the city of Sandusky, Ohio, and declaring that this resolution shall take effect under suspension of the rules as contained in and in accordance with section 13 of the city charter. Commissioners, having heard this resolution, how do you wish to proceed? Mr. Chairman, Commissioner. I move for the adoption of this ordinance, or this resolution, excuse me, under section 13 <coughs> of our city's charter. Second. A motion and a second discussion. Mr. Chairman. Mr. White. Um, I asked a few commissioners prior to the meeting when I uh, read this information, this is going to be a temporary for 18 months, and then the law director told me earlier prior to the meeting that 
we could, city commission who's ever on then, could extend that out <coughs> as being a temporary position. Are we gonna have uh, staff work with maybe a couple commissioners kind of do a better definition on what, where we're gonna take this? Um, through Commission President, uh, I believe the legislation contemplates Planning Commission staff and City Commission at City Commission's directed working on some sort of tra solution that is to the satisfaction of City Commission. Okay. Uh, and if that happens even before the 18-month period, City Commission could even end the moratorium earlier okay. if they are, if you all are satisfied that it's met the goals of okay. of solving any issues. Okay, thank you. Mr. Chairman, I support this moratorium. I want to make it clear I'm, I'm not in any way critical of the Planning Commission or planning staff. Uh, what we have, what we're observing is really a sort of a nationwide kind of reflection on where we are with transient housing. I'm not opposed to transient rentals or transient housing per se. Um, I've enjoyed those opportunities myself as I've traveled around the country. But uh, I, I do think the evidence is growing that transient rentals in the wrong place and governed the wrong way are putting pressure on, on uh, rental prices, uh, availability of uh, rental properties in certain areas like ours where we have a lot of people who, who come here to vacation <coughs> and to recreate. Um, and I do think it's appropriate for us to take a step back, uh, think about this, think about, you know, Mr. Poole made a, a point about you know, our existing legislation says it's got to be a blighted area. Is it in fact a blighted area? Um, why, why would we allow an expansion of an overlay district where it's not a blighted area? What are the benefits that we can bring to our residents uh, through a transient, uh, transient rentals? I mean, there are a lot of things to consider. I think we need to take a step back. I think it's appropriate to take a pause. That is our job to give direction to the planning commission and the planning staff and say, we don't think the balance is quite right, um, and, and then see where this takes us. It's a process. It's not an end to transient rental, to be certain, and uh, it's not a, a green light to transient rental. It's just like, let's pause, take a look. Additional comments, Commissioner? Mr. Chairman, I, I would agree with everything Mr. Murray said, and I guess I go back to as, as long as I've lived in Sandusky, people have always brought it to my attention that they didn't want to live in Sandusky because there was too much rental housing. And to me, especially these overlay districts, it's not like we're saying you can't do transient housing. We're saying you have to do it in these six districts, which is, to me is very reasonable. My problem with overlay districts is you, you encompass a number of houses, and then potentially those all can become rental. And before you know it, you're just swallowed up by all this additional rental housing. And uh, I, I don't care how you cut it, it's just rental housing under a different name. So, so that's my objection. And, and I, I, I look forward to trying to work out a solution. I was impressed with the, the fact that the concept of a moratorium was embraced by every commissioner at this table. Uh, that's somewhat of a rarity. Uh, but I think it's something we all agree on that our neighborhoods uh, and our residents are really our most prized possession. And, and to allow uh, transient housing to encroach into our neighborhoods is to do a disservice to that person who has bought a home in a neighborhood, is raising a family there, is, is sending their kids to school, is getting up every day and going to work. They should not have to listen to a volleyball game at 3 o'clock in the morning. And, and sometimes that's what happens with transient realm. So I, I think tapping the brakes, which is kind of what we're doing with this moratorium, Makes all the sense in the world. I know we've. I know that we have uh, uh, put an 18-month uh, time period on this. Don't have to take 18 months. If, if you solve this, uh, Mr. Pajali, you are liaison to the Planning Commission. If you folks come up with significant ideas and come back to us at any point in time between now and 18 months, we're, we're all ears. We'll listen to you. So I, I encourage you to. I know staff will take this seriously, and I certainly know that you take this seriously, as does every commissioner at this table. As I said, very, very few things we are this unanimous on, but I, I do believe this is one of them. We need to be able to get a handle on this. Mr. Chairman. 
I, uh, I'm a proponent of uh, vacation rentals, and uh, just because I know the people that have bought them have put uh, hundreds of thousands of dollars in them and really have improved the neighborhoods. But uh, what I voted for this moratorium was the reason mm -hmm. I don't see any parameters or, or anything in there that guarantee that's going to happen. So I think we should take time out and make sure that if somebody wants to take a $30,000 house and put a couple hundred thousand dollars in it and is going to fix it up and eliminate some of blight and maybe it's a neighbor that buys the house next door, you know, and all the neighbors are going to embrace them if they fix it up. And if you live next door, you're not going to let a volleyball game go on at 3 o'clock in the morning. If you have a licensing program where uh, the the emergency services are called to the, to the unit, you revoke the license. No more volleyball games, no more rentals. I mean, there's a lot of things we can write into the, uh, the guidelines moving forward, so it'll take some time to get it all. I mean, there's a lot of bait already, so I'm sure it's going to take a few uh, sessions to get it ironed out. M Mr. Chairman, just, just a comment to Mr. Meinzer. I think the difference with your situation is you live there. Mm -hmm. You live next to where your transient housing is. I don't. I don't know. I. I would like to look and see where most of the people that own transient housing live. Mm -hmm. it, it makes a difference when you live there. Yeah. Because you, you make sure volleyball. that yeah, there's not volleyball <laughs> at three in the morning. So that, that that's just my. And I appreciate the fact that you're willing to live next to your your investment. Mr. Chairman, Mr. Uh, three three little follow-ups. Uh, one, we've we've. Talked to Mr. Pajali's point, we have talked about the possibility of having um, uh, adjacent property uh, rentals. That is, if you if you're if it's owner occupied and you're renting over the, uh, space over the garage or second floor or that kind of a thing, that is a different situation than an absentee right. landowner, to be certain. Um, and uh, since you've asked, um, oh, I'm, I want to make one other point, uh, and that is to be clear. This does not affect any existing property owner. No property owner in the Sandusky who is presently legally permitted to uh, host transient rental is in any way impacted by this. There are some folks who are going to be on a bubble who are kind of hoping maybe they could, you know, get the, the zoning changed, but, you know, that's on them. Uh, they, they bought it with the hope that they could get it changed. It wasn't changed. It was a condition of the deal. Um, and so... You know, that's, that's, that's fair for us to make that change. The third point is that since you, Mr. Chairman, since you've asked Mr. Bajali to single-handedly solve this problem, I was wondering if you could ask him to deal with the death ceiling and the border crisis, too. I'd, I'm sure he could do it all. We, we have a lot for you, Steve. Good suggestion. Additional comments, Commissioner? Mr. Myers, you call the roll on that motion. Yes, Mr. President. Mr. Poole? Yes. Mr. Murray? Yes. Mr. Brady? Yes. Mr. Bajali? Yes. Mr. Wannington? Yes. Mr. Meinzer? Yes. And now on that resolution. Mr. Poole? Yes. Mr. Murray? Yes. Mr. Brady? Yes. Mr. Bajali? Yes. Mr. Wannington? Yes. Mr. Meinzer? Yes. That resolution is passed. That concludes our regular agenda. We'll turn to our City Manager for his report. Good evening, Commissioners, audience, and staff. We have a donation of $100 that was received from an anonymous donor to be used for refreshments at an upcoming city commission meeting due to all of your fine work that the commission <laughs> does in leading the city. And I ask for a motion to accept that donation. So moved. Second. Second. Will these, can I ask a question? Will these involve mixers or alcohol? Or alcohol? <laughs> yeah. um, our, said our finance director said no alcohol. $100 is a lot of refreshments. <laughs> Motion and a second. <laughs> and, and Mr. Orzak, I, correct me if I'm wrong, but I believe that letter was uh, specifically thanked myself, did it not? <laughs> I don't recall that. <laughs> very, very diplomatic of you. It's been shredded. <laughs> shredded. I guess we uh, need, need, a, need a vote to accept that. Will you pull the commission on that motion, uh, Ms. Martin? Yes, Mr. President. Mr. Poole? Yes. Mr. Murray? Yes. Mr. Brady? Yes. Mr. Bajali? Yes. Mr. Wannington? Yes. Mr. Meinzer? Yes. Okay, and then, that motion is passed with our thanks. And then uh, we have Park and Rex would like to thank Dragon King Bioactive for their donation of a terrarium and supplies for our Ultramastix Lizard at Sandusky Rec. The value of this terrarium and its supplies are $500. Max King has also donated his time to assist with setup and guiding uh, us on how to raise a all row mastics. 
whatever that is. I'm going to Google it tonight. And this is a great interaction for our children who attend our out-of-school program. Um, get a motion to accept that donation. So moved. Second. Got a motion and a second discussion. Mr. Chairman, Commissioner. just ask the city manager what the what kind of lizard that was again. <laughs> All row mastics. <laughs> he murdered that. He murdered that one too. There's been a motion and a second discussion. I guess that's the discussion. Mr. Pryor, you pull the commission on that one. Yes, Mr. President. Mr. Poole. Mr. Murray. Yes. Mr. Brady. Yes. Mr. Pajali. Yes. Mr. Wannington. Yes. Mr. Meinzer. Yes. That motion is passed and with our thanks for the terrarium and the supplies. That. I'd like to request a motion to affirm Lisa Mazuka as an alternate on the Housing Appeals Board. Her term would uh, be in effect until December 31st of 2024. So moved. Second. Motion and a second discussion. Ms. Myers, you pull the commission on that motion. Yes, Mr. President. Mr. Poole? Mr. Murray? No. Mr. Brady? Yes. Mr. Pajali? Yes. Mr. Wannington? Yes. Mr. Meinzer? No. That, that motion passes three to two, I believe. Is that correct, Mr. Ryan? It is not, actually. Um, city commission votes have to require four votes to pass. It did, where did Wes go? Is he? Did Mr. Poole leave us for the evening? No. I think so. He left his meal here. What now, Mr. Hile? If Commissioner Poole's coming back and wants to vote on it, otherwise that motion would fail. You want me to go check the hallway, sir? <laughs> check the hallway, Chief. I will. Can we have some discussion? What? Uh, we, we, we had discussion. We had discussion prior to the vote, I think. I thought I got uh, the vote first. You got, hmm? you got to debate first and then you vote. Yeah, I know, but I didn't think we had a chance. Oh, yes. Oh. yes. Well, I approved it right away. <laughs> Mr. Poole, we're waiting for you to cast a vote. He said yes. He said yes. Oh, he did, okay. I wasn't sure you knew the, what the was. What the, uh, yes. That, that would be a... That would be a fourth and that would pass. That motion is passed. Sorry, Mr. Chairman. To, to that point. Okay, for the fire department, um, on April 12th, firefighter Tim Eckert retired from Sandusky Fire Department after 20 years of service. As many um, may know, Tim recently endured a years-long battle with cancer, ultimately requiring him to retire. We are happy to announce that his cancer is currently in remission. Congratulations, Tim, on his retirement and his steadfast determination to overcome this challenge. We wish him the best of luck. I would just say from uh, look outside looking in, uh, what a support network the uh, fire department displayed for Mr. Eckert for uh, a year. Um, they were there at his treatments and um, all that. So uh, to Chief D'Amico and his staff, uh, well represented uh, uh, Mr. Eckert. On April 22nd, the American Red Cross and Sandusky Fire Department partnered together to install smoke detectors in one of Sandusky's neighborhoods. 163 smoke detectors were installed in 78 homes, free of charge, in the neighborhood bordered by Camp Street, Tiffin Ave, and south to the railroad tracks. Thanks to Laura Taylor and all of the volunteers from our local chapter of the American Red Cross for coordinating this program and helping so many residents improve the safety of their homes. Um, Public Works, after over 26 years with the city, our assistant city engineer, Jane Cullen, has accepted a position with ODOT. Jane has been known to quietly and meticulously manage high comp highly complicated and not always glamorous sewer, water, and street projects that are vital to the well-being of our community. We are extremely grateful for her service and wish her the best. The 2022 water quality report has been distributed. Big Island Water Works continues to meet and exceed all established drinking water standards. Please refer to the city's website for more information. The city invites residents to participate in a second round of yard waste drop-off. Um, they indicated that there was a small percentage of residents that utilized it this year and might have been due to the weather. So. Um, a free charge for residents to take their yard waste can be dropped off at Barnes Composting, 1630 Camp Road, Huron, on Saturday, May 20th from 8 a.m. to 4 p.m. and Sunday, May 21st from 10 a.m. to 4 p.m. 
Community Development, the city will be sponsoring free fair housing workshops. A workshop for landlords will be held on Wednesday, May 17th from 5 to 6 p.m. and again on Thursday, May 18th from 4.30 to 5.30. A fair housing regulations clinic for tenants will be held on Thursday, May 18th from <coughs> 3 to 4 p.m. All workshops will be held at the Sandusky Library. For more information, call 1-800-850-0467. There will be a Sandusky Wheels Park concept plan open house on Thursday, June 15th from 5 to 7 p.m., rain or shine. The meeting will be held at the current park on Meg Street behind the Justice Center. Please attend to review and share your thoughts on the design concept. For more information, it can be found at www.cityofsandusky.com backslash Wheels Park. And for recreation, the rec center um, updated seven, uh, this is an update for the rec center. There are seven uh, community stakeholder meetings have been completed to learn what is important to include and consider for our new recreation and community center. We're in the process of scheduling at least three additional stakeholder meetings. As of Friday, May 5th, 2,449 surveys have been completed. 60% of the surveys completed were from Sandusky residents. 20% have been completed by residents of Perkins Township. 81% of the respondents strongly support the city building a recreation community center. 48% strongly support a levy to help pay for the operations of a rec and community center. The, rec the Sandusky Recreation Community Center facility survey will be open until June 5th. Surveys can be completed online by visiting www.cityofsandusky.com backslash rec center. And that will conclude my report for this evening. <coughs> How much are questions for a city manager? Mr. Chairman. Commissioner Roy. Isn't the police memorial Saturday at 2 o'clock? Yes, the police memorial is uh, Saturday at 2 o'clock at the uh, uh, police memorial site at the courthouse on the north lawn. Thank you, Thank you for bringing that up. Additional questions for the city manager? Mr. Chairman. Commissioner Roy. Just two things. Uh, one, I, I just want to say how astounded I am at the level of participation on the, the rec center um, survey is a really high numbers. Um, and so I really want to thank everyone who took the time to complete that. I think there's a lot to be learned from that as we slice and dice some of the data and take a, a deeper look into some of that. And then uh, the other thing is um, I did a follow up with Mr. Bill Birch, who is the, Mr. Klein, help me, I'm going to get the title wrong, but he's the, he's the manager of the water treatment plant. I mean, a supervisor. I think that's the right superintendent. superintendent. <laughs> Knew I was missing that that better title. So the superintendent. Sorry, Mr. Birch. I didn't mean to knock you down there. Uh, but I had a, I had a technical question, um, and he he responded with um, a level of expertise that I think everyone in the community would be pleased to know exists because the safety of our water is so helpful. Or, I mean, so important. Uh, his his he had the ability to take. You have the same ability you have, Mr. Klein. You have that ability to take really complex engineering stuff and, compl and explain it in a way that somebody like I, who's not a scientist, understands. Uh, and I really appreciated that. So um, we have a very, very high quality water in the city of Sandusky. Um, and if you travel around, you find out how good it is here and, and in comparison to, to other places. So I'm very thankful for that. So just want to let you know I had that interesting experience with Mr. Superintendent Birch. Mr. Chairman, from the, commission, uh, from the manager's report, he indicated a significant number of folks were interested in uh, uh, raising their taxes for uh, rec center. Is this, this the time to start planning to get that put on the ballot? At least get started down the road so we're not surprised. Yeah, through the commission president, uh, Mr. Poole, we uh, are going to complete up the survey. Uh, we are starting to prepare legislation to put the uh, um, levy ballot language uh, before the commission. That'll be coming in, I believe, June time frame. Great. And uh, we should have uh, some good indication and uh, conceptual of what, where the uh, rec center is going to be and what programming that will be able to be provided um, f for uh, the community and then we'll start engaging in that process. But uh, the language for the ballot and all that is, is uh, on our radar and coming up soon. Thank you. Items of old business, questions. Any items of old business? Any items of new business? There are no 
no items of new business items. Are there any public comments on any item that pertains to city business? Step to the podium, share with us your name and address and your comments. Hi, Lisa Mazuka, 814 Bardshar Road. Um, this was an agenda item, but I just wanted to thank you guys for passing that moratorium. Um, I personally know people who um, in our city have been displaced by transient rental. Um, about a fifth of our city uh, lives under federal poverty guidelines, and rentals might just seem like rentals, but a long-term rental um, is good for the people who aren't living on an income that can afford the higher end um, properties in the city. And I just, I appreciate you passing that moratorium. And Mr. Pajali, um, when you go to, with the Planning Commission and you're considering ways that you can work through this, um, supply and demand um, is crucial and what, what happens is if you have a certain demand for these Airbnbs at a certain point, it should just level itself off naturally. But when you have a tourist town, I mean, that's, the demand is so high that that's what's really going on here. So just bring that into consideration that the, the demand might just outweigh the supply unless something drastic is done. So thank you. Thank you, Ms. Bazooka. Additional public comments on any item regarding yes. city business? <laughs> <laughs> um, I don't have an opinion on the monitorium, uh, but I just wanted to make a comment. I own two properties. One is in the transient rental on Meg Street, and that person pays $450 a month. You know, almost nothing, really. And I just wanted to give you a viewpoint of somebody in that. So, she, and that's in the transient rental, but she is a long-term rental. So that's kind of a situation that some people may be in, you know, they, and I just have a vision for the, the, the house that <coughs> is not in transient. And that's why I want to make it a transient because I, I see a vision for it. <coughs> but uh, yeah, I just wanted to make that. Comment. Thank you. Additional public comments. Move to adjourn. Move to adjourn. Adjourn. Second.